In this screencast, we are going to take a look at the difference between a lump sum tax and a per unit tax. We're going to understand which curves in a perfectly competitive graph are affected by a lump sum tax. And then we're also then going to look at the perfectly competitive graph and see which curves are affected by the per unit tax. In the end, we will also contrast the tax with the subsidy to see which curves on the graph are affected and in which way. So first off, the difference between a lump sum tax and a per unit tax. A lump sum tax is the size of the tax that's not dependent upon output. It's a set amount that somebody, a business is being charged. So they charge the same amount to each producer. So let's say that you're producing a sugary product. Well, the government might give a lump sum tax of $100 per year. There, every company is going to pay $100 a year to the government, regardless if they produce a small amount or if they produce a large amount. A per unit tax, on the other hand, is the size of a tax that's dependent upon output. So the government is going to charge an amount on each unit produced. So instead of doing the $100 lump sum, they're going to do $1 per unit. And so the amount that you're going to be charged it's going to be based upon the total number of products that you produce times a dollar. Um, one other thing is that the per unit tax, it can also be called an excise tax, uh, and they mean the exact same thing. When, we, when you get into externalities, it's known as a Pogoibian tax, and so they all mean a per unit tax. So here we have a perfectly competitive firm. It's the short run because you can see here that the ATC curve is above Mr. Dark. Um, some things that you need to think about when they're asking tax questions, and it's key here, are they asking short run or long run? So first we're going to focus on the short run. This is just about when the tax is placed, what happens. And you need to think about what happens to the cost curves, meaning the AFC, the AVC, the ATC, and the marginal cost curve. You also need to think about if the marginal cost curve is affected, the profit maximizing quantity, because that uses the formula of MR equals MC. So on this graph here, MR equals MC, where the two curves intersect, and that gives you a quantity here at QF. So let's take a look first at that $100 lump sum tax. In the short run, we got to think about what cost curves are affected. It's a lump sum, and so that's a fixed cost. So the AFC is not on this graph, but the AFC would shift up because this is an extra fixed cost now that the company has to pay. Um, the ABC is not affected because it's a fixed cost. The ATC, remember, is ABC plus AFC. And so if the AFC is shifting up, the ATC is also shifting up. Remember that the marginal cost is derived from the change in variable cost, and so the marginal cost is not affected by the ATC. So it's really about by the um, variable cost, sorry. So this is really about the ATC when we're talking about changes. Um, the per unit tax, on the other hand, in the short run, has a few more cost curves that we need to think about. The per unit is that dollar that's placed on each quantity. And so the AFC is not affected, but the ABC would shift up because this would be a variable cost. It's dependent upon output. The ATC is the ABC plus the AFC, and so the ATC will also shift up. The marginal cost is equal to the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity, or you could say the marginal cost equals the change in variable cost. Either way, you're going to see that your marginal cost curve is going to shift up. Well, remember, if the marginal cost curve shifts up, that's going to affect our profit maximizing quantity here of MR equals MC. So you have a new intersection of this MC2 with Mr. Dark, which hasn't changed, and that's going to give you then a Q2 that is less than QF. Okay, so what happens then in the long run? So what we just went through when you actually place the tax on, that's a short run. So now we're looking at what, what is the result in the long run from a lump sum tax? So remember, the long run is about that ease of entry and exit into the industry. And in this case here, I mean, they were already suffering an economic loss because you go where MR equals MC, take it to the ATC, so price minus ATC, which is higher, times quantity, and this is going to be their economic loss. But now they have the same uh, profit maximizing output, and you're taking it up to the ATC, and this is the ATC2, and now they have an even larger economic loss. 
And so because there's an economic loss, be, uh, firms will exit the industry, which affects the supply curve of the industry graph. And so moving over to this graph here, if they're going to exit, that's going to shift the supply curve to the left. That'll give us a price that is higher, and it will also give us a quantity that is lower. So again, the ease of entry and exit is what we focus on in the long run when we're talking about taxes. For the per unit tax, remember we had a lot more shifting going on with the different cost curves. But it's the same uh, question here when we're talking about what is the result from per unit tax in the long run. So we need to think about the ease of entry and exit. This firm here, they shift over here to this Q2 after uh, with the new marginal cost curve intersecting the original Mr. Darb. Um, you look here and price minus an ATC that's higher. So price minus ATC times quantity is going to give you an even larger economic loss. Because there's an economic loss, the um, supply curve will be affected and firms will exit the industry. And so the supply curve on the industry graph will shift to the left. It again is gonna raise the price and it is going to lower the quantity. So you need to read the questions and see, are they asking about short run or are they asking about long run? Because that's gonna determine if you're talking about the cost curve shifting, short run, or if you're talking about the ease of entry and exit, which would be the long run. Now, um, opposite of a tax is a subsidy. And a subsidy is a sum of money that's granted by the government to assist an industry or a business. Uh, it's a sum of money, it's a lump sum. And so this is a, fi a fixed cost. But because it, it is a uh, fixed cost, it's not going to increase it like a tax would, but rather it's going to decrease the fixed cost curves. Now remember, if it's a per unit tax, then that's going to change the variable cost and the marginal cost, not the fixed cost. But a subsidy is a lump sum, and so it's always going to decrease the fixed cost. So what does that mean? That means then that for a tax, I don't care if the tax is a lump sum or a per unit, either one is going to increase the ATC. A subsidy will decrease the ATC. So when you think back to those graphs and about how what happens then in the with regard to um, output, which is nothing because the marginal cost curve doesn't change, but in the long run, what happens then? It depending upon if this creates a profit or a loss, then you got to think about firms entering and exiting the industry. 